Alright, Dracul asks, in your opinion, are asymmetrical builds OP? No, they're not OP. There's some mechs that can run very good symmetrical builds, like Stalkers are good at this, Jaeger mechs are good at this. They're not, they're, I would say, weaker mechs than the mechs that currently run asymmetrical builds, but they're still very strong. So, the asymmetrical builds, no, are not OP, but the other thing is, this is not going to change, because hardpoint locations in Mecha Online are based off of stock configurations. So if that stock configuration includes ballistic and energy hard points on one side of your body and jump jets, you're likely to turn it into a jump sniper right now. So, and even more so now uh, with the clan mechs coming in and how you'll be able to change out their arms and side torsos and things like that. Customization is going to continue. This will never go away. Asymmetric builds are strong, but not game breaking, and they can't. You can't really stop a player from making them. They'd have to redesign a lot of the game. Alcom Ist says, How does hitbox geometry affect the viability of a mech competitively? Hitbox geometry literally makes or breaks a mech. Uh, it's the reason why uh, many top competitive teams don't use Jaeger mechs, for instance. While the Jaeger mech, I would say, is one of the most popular mechs in the game, at a competitive level, it's far too vulnerable to be effective. It, most of the builds you want to run on it require XL engines. Those side torsos are massive. The arms, while they did increase the arm hitbox size, the arms do not cover the side torso below the arm. So it can't shield very effectively. So XL blowouts are very prevalent on Jaeger mechs. Uh, and then on the other hand, we have uh, here's the between the catapult and stalker. Very similar mech geometry. However, their hitboxes completely different. Both have the both have the jutting faces and bodies, except the catapult's uh, center torso hitbox goes up the side torsos a bit, and its side torsos are then farther back on the sides of the mech, making the center torso hitbox enormous. Therefore, it makes it not safe for XL use, but compatible for XL use. So I'd recommend running uh, catapults with XL engines because your side torsos are so small, you're going to be taking most of the hits to your center torso. Uh, now, on the other hand, the Stalker, same geometry, hitboxes, completely different. Center torso hitbox is only the thin strip of the new nose up the top of the head. The, the side torsos are almost, almost to the nose cone and completely down the sides. So, the Stalker can turn to you, turn sideways to you, and you it's really difficult to hit their center torso and basically impossible to hit them in the opposite torso from which they're shielding. So... Uh, there's certain mechs that just can't, they're not viable competitively at all because of their geometry, and others that excel because of their geometry. Sergey Koeniski, sorry about that. How to make an awesome, a better mech? Change hitbox, give perks on PPC, or just make him thin but taller? All of the above. <laughs> we, the awesome has been suffering for quite a long time now. It does its hitboxes. Uh, it's more that its geometry needs to be changed. It needs to be thinner, more like the Victor. Both are 80 tons, but the Awesome is way more of a, a box, way easier to hit. Uh, and yeah, now perks on PPCs. We've also been asking this for a long time. The Awesome 8Q, its stock loadout is three PPCs and a small laser. However, go see limits are two PPCs fired at a time. It would be great if they'd add a perk to it that it would allow it to fire three PPCs without incurring any ghost heat. So the awesome needs quite a bit of love, and it's just it's been a pretty poor mech ever since more assault options came out past the just the Atlas and Awesome. It's alright with me, and Energy asks, what do you think of the coming fall damage and jump jet heat systems? Assuming no changes to the current terrain slope and visible pebbles system. Do you think with all the recent nerfs on jump jetting sniping that MechWarrior Online is headed in a positive direction, competitively speaking? Yes, jump jet heat is good news. Uh, for It's been a long time. Jump jet mechs are far superior to ground dumping mechs. It's just, a, <laughs> it's just how the game works. And all the jump jet mechs have had to pay for is weight and a little bit of space on their mech, which now has become quite a bit more detrimental, especially to the Highlander, with its class 1 jump jets at 2 tons each, and how slow that thing takes to the air. Uh, but adding jump jet heat will slow down jump sniping builds, will add some kind of 
additional, not penalty, but it it makes ground uh, mechs slightly better and nerfs jumping mechs a little bit. Uh, now, fall damage, those numbers that were projected already, those numbers are ridiculous, honestly. Way too high, way too much damage to your legs. Absurd, basically. Uh, if they tone those down a bit, I, I'll be fine with it. Uh, but basically, jump snipe you could change from being able to stay, and stay a whole match, just jump over the top of buildings at long range, shoot people, and do that for 10 to 15 minutes straight. That won't be viable anymore if you take a lot of damage to your legs. Jump sniping will move towards what we're already doing right now, and it's been going on for the past like four months, three or four months. It's been a kind of a shift towards quick movement, uh, you know, the counterclockwise circle strafing with your enemies, using your jump jets for dodging and just maneuvering to get small hops, just a little bit of lift and get your shots in. So we'll see. But overall, it'll be good for the rest of the game as far as balance goes. Uh, LRMs and brawling will become more viable because jump jet mechs won't just be able to hang back and uh, jump snipe over the top of cover as easily without taking a lot of damage to their legs. Uh, now, competition has not been bad. The, the jump sniping competition is great. Putting everything together, how high you jump, the jump dodging, cutting your jump jets early, shooting max air to air, all that is really intense gameplay, really fun, and so the competition has been good. However, it's been stagnant now for over a year. Jump sniping has been the primary method of combat and competition, and for, unless these jump jet changes are pretty considerable, I don't see that changing. Sogard asks, how much in your experience does AMS help against streaks? AMS is useful against streaks. If it's just you with your one AMS at 270 meters, it depends on the timing when it checks whether missiles are in the air. You'll get one, maybe two missiles. Inside 100, missiles, inside 100 meters, you're lucky to get one. So uh, it works good. It's, it's good to have. Not t terribly uh, effective, though. Now, on the other hand, if you're running in a light lance, a coordinated light lance, we'll say four mechs, all of you have an AMS, all working together, every time a mech with two streak SRM2s will say fires at you, you could eat up three or all four of those between all of your AMS firing together. So definitely the more AMS you add, the more effective you'll be against the streaks, but they're not terribly effective as just you, one AMS against streaks. Sogard also asks, do you think Firestarter needs a hitbox rework or increase? And uh, no, they got the Firestarter right. The Firestarter's hitboxes are great. I've not had any problem hitting any part of it. It's it's really great. If you're having problems killing the Firestarter, just shoot it in the legs. Like, like every mech, you can't actually shield your legs except for with your other leg or terrain. So don't bother going for the torsos. If you're a light mech or a medium mech or something, and you have the opportunity, just shoot them in the legs. Once the leg is gone, a light mech is basically dead. Morpheus asks, what do you think about the three mech mastering system? I've never liked the three mech mastering system. I've never heard anybody say they like the three mech mastering system. However, we understand why there's this three mech mastering system. It's because free-to-play games need a grind in order to incentivize players to pay money for the game, in this case, to buy GXP. So the grind can be intense in some places. I, un uh, I unfortunately don't notice it anymore. I've, I've got so much GXP and C bills from having played the game now for so long. But I do feel people's pain. I felt the pain at the beginning as well, when, right when open beta ended and we got to actually buy or sorry, right when closed beta ended and we finally bought our mechs permanently. So no, don't like the three mech mastering system. I don't have a good alternative for you though. Dyrus Nye says, with PGI revealing how clan PPCs will work, how do you see the arc splash mechanic affecting the game? Uh, basically, as far as gameplay, it's going to be 15 damage still, uh, unless you shoot an arm or leg, in which case it will be 12.5 damage. This is going to be interesting to see. Uh, right now, mechs, especially asymmetric builds, uh, take do a lot of shielding with the side of their body that they are willing to lose, and protecting the one that they want to keep. Now, if that 
location will say a victor's right torso is already crit red internals you're looking at death pretty soon here if you take another shot to your right torso sometimes you can get a lot get away with shooting quite a bit more before you go down just by properly shielding now with the clan erppc if you get shot in the center torso and 2.5 damage is transferred to that right torso that's already red internal you could be dead so shielding is going to take <laughs> shielding is going to take a nerf which is interesting to say uh, it's going to be more difficult to shield your crit locations. People can just shoot the adjacent locations to get the, the hitbox they want. Darius Nye asks, how could the clan PPC mechanic be measured against the experience of missile splash damage? Uh, it's not the same as missile splash damage. Uh, the clan ERPPCs, PPCs, the, the term they're using is, is going to arc damage to two adjacent locations or to one adjacent location if you hit him in the arms or legs. Uh, so it's a straight transfer of, of damage, an exact amount, 2.5. The splash damage was a problem because the splash damage overlapped multiple hitboxes, which caused each missile, uh, so we'll say SRMs, an SRM used to do two damage, we'll say SRM does two damage. Now if it hits you on the border between the right torso and center torso, it's actually doing two damage to each of those locations instead of just two damage for the missile. So that's why SRMs were so powerful for a while there, is because they were actually doing more damage than they were supposed to because they were hitting multiple locations. So the new clan ear PPCs are not splash damage, it's arcing. Sogard again asks, do you think the LBX is a good brawling weapon? At point blank range, and I mean like under 50 meters, sure, yes, it's a good, it's got a good rate of fire, uh, the 10 different projectiles has good critting, otherwise no, the LBX is a terrible weapon. Uh, I wouldn't recommend anybody use it, simply because, like I say here, you can't afford the assumption that you get to fight at point blank range. You may just not even get the opportunity to get that close to where the LBX will be a good weapon. Uh, at 200 meters even, you're shooting, a, uh, shooting, let's say, a medium mech, some of your, project your pellets aren't even going to hit, and those that do hit are probably hitting three to maybe four, five different hitboxes. So that's one damage on multiple different hitboxes. That's not going to be working out well for you. So the LB10, the LBX, while it sounds cool, looks cool, and is cool in concept, giant robot space shotgun, it is not a good weapon in MechWarrior Online. This is not your MechWarrior 4 L, uh, LBX autocannon. This is MechWarrior Online, and it's not a good weapon. <laughs>